In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a smooth Spotify UI animation. I'll show you how to create it step by step very easily using After Effects. So yeah, here we go. I'm creating a new composition with the same resolution as of the video which you are going to edit. Okay, now let's import our clip. So this is the clip that we are going to work on. Let's trim out this. Okay, now we need to make it a pre-comp. Now go to the tracker panel. In case if you can't find it here, go to window and make sure the tracker has got a little check mark before it. With the clip selected, click on track motion and then a new tracker window will appear here. Here we need to place this tracker point on a high contrasting area to track that particular area. After done, click on this play button to track that particular area throughout the composition. Yeah, it has tracked that area perfectly. Now we need to create a null object. Click on edit target and make sure to select the null layer and then click on apply button and here make sure the dimensions are set to X and Y. Now the null layer has all the tracking data. Now we can close this window. Now let's create a new composition. Now we need to copy the video layer from composition 1 into composition 2. At this frame, I want the rectangle to pop up. Here, I'm adding some markers according to the hand movement. And right here, when my hand overlaps the knob, I would like to animate a first swipe animation. So I will add a bit mark over there. And then again, when it overlaps, add another marker. Do the same for the rest. Now let's add a shape layer. Make sure the fill is set to white and the stroke to none. And draw a rectangle shape like so. I would like to have this layer from this beat mark. Let's minimize its opacity a bit. Set its angle point at the bottom middle. Now open the rectangle path properties, unlink the chain, and add a keyframe over here. And then come to the very beginning of the frame and decrease the y coordinate value like so. Add the position keyframes on the same frames as of the size properties. Now come to the first position keyframe, bring it down with the help of Y coordinate just like so. So it increases its size from the bottom. Now let's add another shape layer. This time select the ellipse tool and draw a circle over here. Now let's add some text. Position it over the rectangle like so. Here I am adding some other text labels as well. Let's draw a line shape between these two texts with the help of pen tool. Ok now let's add a shape layer. Now take a rounded rectangle shape. And draw a shape like so. And add the word following with the white color. Make sure they are aligned properly. Let's have all these layers from this beat mark. Now select all the text layers and the blue rectangle shape as well. And add position property keyframes at the beginning. And then come few frames forward and add keyframes over there as well. Now head back to the first keyframe and position all of them down with the help of Y coordinate value just like so. Now let's add this bounce expression. Hold the Alt key and click on this position stopwatch icon and paste the expression here. Do the same for the other layers as well. Yeah, here we go. This is what we have got. Now offset those keyframes, few frames forward so they gradually pop in one after the other. I feel it's too slow, so let's make it a bit faster by bringing these keyframes closer. Now let's make a copy of this OG rectangle layer and rename the copied one to something like dummy rectangle. 
Now select all the text layers and the blue rectangle layer as well and track map them to the dummy rectangle layer. Increase the dummy rectangle opacity to 100%. I forgot to add this verify logo. We need to just do the same process. Track map it to the dummy rectangle layer. Add position keyframes. On the first keyframe, slide it down just like so. And add the bones expression for this one as well. Place the play hit on the first beat mark. Select all the text layers and the blue rectangle shape as well. And then come few frames backward and add keyframes on opacity. And then come few frames forward and set the opacity value to zero. Here we go, this is what we have got. Let's import these slides. I have already created them in Photoshop. Let me rename these layers to avoid any confusion. Select the first image and drag and drop it on the composition icon to create a new composition. And here with no layer selected, double click on this rounded rectangle shape to have a rectangle shape which is same as of the composition size. Now open the rectangle path properties and increase the roundness to something like this and place it below the image and track map the image to the shape layer. Now let's make three more copies of this composition. Now open the sixth composition. Select the image layer in it. Hold the Alt key and drag and drop the second image on this image layer to replace it. Now do the same with the seventh and the eighth compositions as well. So here we got this. Now head back to composition 2. Drag and drop the fifth composition in it. Scale it down and position it above the rounded rectangle just like so. Adjust these scales accordingly. Let's offset this eighth composition a few frames forward. Add position keyframes on the fifth, sixth, and seventh compositions. And then come few frames forward and add another set of keyframes. Come to the first position keyframes and slide them down just like so. Add the bones expression for this one as well. Offset them one after the other just like so. Select the 5th, 6th and 7th compositions and fragment them to the dummy rectangle layer. Now let's make it a bit quicker. Now we need to create separate null objects for the 5th, 6th and 7th compositions. Parent in the 5th composition to its corresponding null layer. Now place the playhead on the first beat mark and add a position keyframe. Do the same for the 6th and 7th null layers as well. Add a position keyframe for the eighth composition as well. And then come few frames forward and swipe them to the left. 
add keyframes on the scale property on the fifth composition and on the second keyframe decrease the scale value to 20 duplicate the eighth composition select both the position keyframes make sure the playhead is placed on the second keyframe by holding the alt key swipe them to the right with the help of right arrow key on the keyboard here the bones is still there on these layers to fix it, we need to increase the decay value in the expression, change it from 2 to 5, so the bounce ends quickly. Now do the same for the rest of the compositions as well. Now select the 7th composition and add keyframes on the scale property and increase the scale value to 22 on the 2nd keyframe. Now by being on the 2nd beatmap, add position keyframes on these layers and then come few frames forward and swipe them to the left. On the 7th composition, add keyframes on the scale property and on the 2nd keyframe, decrease the scale value to 20 and for the 8th composition, add keyframes on scale properties and on the 2nd keyframe, increase the scale value to 22 Now make a copy of the 9th composition, select all the keyframes, make sure the playhead is on the last keyframe and swipe them to the right with the help of right arrow key by holding the alt key. Now come to the 3rd beat mark and add position keyframes on the 8th, 9th and 10th compositions and on the 7th null layer as well. Come few frames forward and swipe them to the left. Add scale keyframes on the 8th composition and on the 2nd keyframe decrease the scale value to 20 and finally add scale keyframes on the 9th composition increase the scale value to 22 on the last keyframe and on this last beat mark add a keyframe on scale property and add keyframe on the scale property for the OG rectangle layer as well and then come few frames forward and increase the scale value just like so and add position keyframes as well as shown here For the 8th and 10th composition layers, add opacity keyframes to create the fade out effect. Do the same for the circle layer as well. Let's see what we have got. Now place the play hit on this rectangle beat mark. Now select the circle layer, add keyframes on the scale property. On the first keyframe, decrease the scale value to 0 and add the bounce expression for this one as well. Now let's add a dp. Minimize its scale a bit and track mat it to the circle layer. Now hide the video layer from this composition 2, it's just for a reference. Now head back to composition 1 and input the composition 2. Now it's time to rotoscope the hand. For that we need to make a copy of the OG video layer and position the duplicated one above all the other layers. Select this copied layer and select this roto brush tool. Double click on this video layer and that opens up a new window. Make a selection on the hand as shown here. Make sure the resolution is set to full for best results.
After making selection, we need to go frame by frame forward by pressing the page down key. Make sure the hand is in selection throughout. We need to adjust it in some areas like this. You can see the preview on the right side window. And after done, we need to click on this crease button to freeze the selection. Here, I forgot to track map these three layers to the dummy rectangle layer. I don't know why it's copying out. Let's fix it. Add scale property keyframes on the dummy rectangle layer. Unlink this chain and increase the scale by coordinate value. Add position keyframes as well. And bring it down just like so. Yeah, it is good, but it is not following the hand movement. To make it follow the hand movement, we need to parent the composition tube to the null layer. Now you can see that entire rectangle label is following the hand movement accordingly. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you so much for watching.